This is our presentation of the results of a computational life science class at the Universidad Nacional de Colombia. Uh, we are uh, Darius Martinez and Miguel Caro. Hello. And Cesar, Cesar Hernandez. So here we're going to uh, reproduce some of the findings of the Professor Abella. Uh, they explain to us uh, one of his works, and uh, we reproduce uh, just two of his works uh, with Neuron in order to explore and understand what happened in our brains. First, we have that the activity, uh, the synchrony, the synchronized activity of a large number of neurons results in microscopic oscillations in electrical activity. Uh, other one uh, feature is that the amplitude of ongoing oscillations fluctuates irregularly with high amplitude episodes. Other one, uh, the oscillations in electrical activity can be measured in EEG image and recorded. The episodes of high synchrony are relevant for brain function because they provide favorable conditions to learn. Uh, what's the problem that we face in this case? The amplitude fluctuation occurs in many gray regions. However, the mechanisms by which they are generated are still poorly known. Now I'm going to talk to you about the method. Mr. Abella designed a network with 100 neurons, 80 excitatory neurons and 20 inhibitory neurons. Each neuron is modeled to generate action potentials. In, for, for this, uh, Mr. Abella used the hotkin Hutley model. So in this model, each neuron has three kinds of channels, uh, potassium channels, sodium channels, and leaky channels. In addition to that, either if the neuron is excitatory, it has also uh, AMPA connections that are excitatory connections. But if the neuron is inhibitory, it has GABA connections. So it inhibits the neurons that make synapses with. And the uh, ratio that he uses here, the 80 excitatory neurons and 20 excitatory neurons, is because in our brains, the ratio is more or less about that. That means that we have more excitatory neurons than inhibitory neurons. Here is the structure of the net. So we have a population of inhibitory neurons who, which makes inhibitory connection with the excitatory populations and also makes inhibitory uh, connections among them. And here the excitatory population has excitatory connection with the inhibitory population and also has excitatory populations with itself. Now, the drive that he uses is twofold. First, every single neuron receives a constant current that is um, makes this neuron depolarize and is represented by this and by this. Addition to that, there is another drive that is represented by external action potentials that is a train of action potentials that are modeling uh, input from another net. Addition to that, he sets the probability of the connections between the neurons and the population of neurons from the beginning. So he represents that uh, the probability that an excitatory neuron is connected with another excitatory neuron, 0 0.3, an excitatory neuron connected to an inhibitory neuron, inhibitory neuron connected to excitatory neuron, and inhibitory neuron connected to another inhibitory neuron. Here is how they analyze the data. So first, they construct 
firing rate histograms by con for counting the spikes in time and they use a beam of 6 mi uh, milliseconds they use 6 milliseconds because in that way they are sure they, they will count only one spike in that beam second, they perform a wavelet analysis using Torrance algorithm and then he obtained a smooth curve by interpolating a third order spline. Finally, they identify high amplitude episodes and low amplitude episodes arbitrarily. They set the line a threshold which he can distinguish between HAA and LAE. In order to, to, to get some insight about uh, what they uh, get with this uh, kind of model, uh, we made four experiments. Each one is uh, varying uh, some of the probabilities of the connection between neurons of the inventory and the HTTP populations. In this one, uh, we are varying the probability to take an inhibitory cell uh, to uh, connect it to an excitatory cell. Uh, so what we do is to uh, take a step to 0 0.1 and vary from 0 to 1, the, this probability. What we get here are the results uh, varying for the value of 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and to the uh, value of 1. In the first place, we have a total, a, a, a total no, no inhibition because the value is zero, so it's a total activation and also a high frequency. Then we get here how the probability of inhibition uh, begins and act with the excitatory population cells, and we get here less excitatory cells population activated at this uh, moment uh, for this probability. Also, with that, we can get here very many uh, episodes of high activation and low activation. And what we get also here is that the spaces of uh, high activation and low activations are irregular. That's uh, one of the findings that they try to reproduce. This is the second one. We uh, make uh, more or less the same exercise. But we vary uh, just the probabilities of the connections between the excitatory cells to the excitatory cells. What it means that when we get uh, one excitatory cell activated, they're going to activate the other cells in the same population. What we get here is that we uh, have a, an activation with the probability of zero and from steps of 0 0.1 as they produce uh, to 1. And we, what we can see here is that there are some activations.
So what we get is a uh, some initial population uh, with no activations to the same population, and then we can get more and more more at is it's the process activated, but we can see also here that these activations are not regular and these uh, high episodes and low episodes uh, continue to uh, be irregular. The interesting thing here is that we can have a, a really high episodes of a synchrony of these cells. What it means that we have a, a, a big amount of the cells in the same population that are excited at the same time. Uh, and in a, each time we increase the cells, we also increase this population, this uh, frequency of activation here. So for the third experiment, we uh, begin to worry what happened with the excitatory to inhibitory connection. So what we model, what we model when one excitatory cell is activated, how this uh, the synapse with the, to the inhibitory cell, inhibitory cell uh, is taking uh, a shape in uh, our model with some kind of probability. So in this part, we have an uh, excitatory population that do nothing with the inhibitory population. And in this one, we have the excitatory population that each time, each, uh, time have a probability of one to uh, activate the inhibition. So what we get is a kind of a inhibitory uh, progression caused to the excitatory activation. So what happened here is that there are a total activation here that is not inhibitory uh, steps caused to the activation of the excitatory cells and we know how it is reduced, how the activation is reduced because of the same uh, excitatory uh, episodes. So we can here see that there are each time less and less and less uh, excitatory uh, with high amplitude episodes caused to the same uh, to the high probability to the, that the excitatory cells activate the inhibition of the inhibitory cells. And the last one is a, what happens if a, we vary the connection between the, the same inhibitory uh, cells? So what it means? What happens with the uh, inhibition of the inhibition cells? So here we have the same for the probabilities from zero to one in the probabilities. What is interesting here is that we have, a, well, with no inhibition, we have no results. But with total inhibition, well, let's see the, this picture here, we have a big activation of the excitatory cells because there are yeah, not a way to regulate the activation at cost for the GABA uh, circuits. So there are a population of no inhibition at the, at the first, and each time we get more 
inhibited cells in the same inhibition of the same inhibition cells. What it means is that each time that it increases, we have less uh, inhibition of the excitatory population. So each time we get more and more and more excitatory cells activated because the inhibition of the inhibitory cells is uh, has a higher probability. So in the last one, when the inhibition is total, the probability is one, we get a big, uh, all core complete uh, excitatory cells activated at the same time. Now this is the second model of the Mr. Abello did. It's a two network model. So each ne if a network is exactly the same as the first paper. But now they are combining two networks and looking for the different uh, interactions between the networks and with the interactions they can create some oscillations that are more complex that the oscillations that, they, that he got with only one network. So here we have that in the brain there is also more complex oscillations that now are trying to be modeled with these two network model. The problem here is that how the interaction between the two networks are affecting the one how, how the interactions of the two new of the two networks are creating the oscillations. Here um, they created two kinds of networks. One is called the one is generated a slow oscillations and the other one is generating fast oscillations. And the difference here is that one is uh, work, working with uh, 20 hertz and the other one is working with a 32 hertz. And each network is uh, exactly the same as the first paper and the interaction is unidirectional. And they use only one direction of the connection between the networks to make the model simpler. We have here two networks. The first have a slow uh, frequency. Uh, the, the, the inhibitory and excitatory cells are indicated by lowercase uh, letters, like we can see there. And in the fast network, the inhibitory and excitatory cells are indicated by uppercase letters, like, like we can see there. The model of functional cells is the same of the first experiment. In this case, uh, is the hulking Hughes the model. We have uh, 80 excitatory cells on, and 20 inhibitory cells. The way in that the network are connected uh, is explained by these weights. In these graphics we can see that the excitatory to inhibitory connection that it does is internetwork. It's the same that excitatory to inhibitory connection in the low network. The way is in this case zero point 65 uh, in the two excitatory to excitatory cells in the in the fast uh, uh, network is the same that in the slow network is 0 0.3 in this case and that and that are the the weights of the other types of connections in this uh, table, we have the connection between cells inter-network. In this case, the connections are discrete, discrete uh, in terms of the connection intra-network. Uh, 
uh, by example, the connection uh, from inhibitory cell in the log uh, network to excitatory cell in the, in the fast network is defined in terms of the connection in the intranetwork. In this case, is equal to 0 0.15 uh, times e inter e connection uh, from inhibitory cells to excitatory cells in the fast or, or in the slow uh, network. To the other types of connections in the internetwork, in the way, in the same way, uh, are established established the the weights like we can see in this in this table. Here we uh, we have uh, the external drive that is proposed uh, in the paper of uh, Mr. Aguilar. So we have here uh, a slow network. We have here the fast network. But we have external conditions that help uh, the model to, to study what are the conditions for the activations of the cells of each network. So uh, they have a constant current, exterior constant current, uh, the same for each uh, network, but they vary the action potentials of the slow network in values from uh, 2.8 to 6.3 for these uh, inhibitory cells. And they also vary the potent action potentials for the excitatory cells from uh, 10.1 to 11.3 uh, in order to control uh, the conditions of these uh, two kind of networks. What they do to explore why, how are the connections, and how are the relationships between each network they uh, explore. What happened with the connection from one excitatory cell in the slow connection in, in the slow network, sorry, to one excitatory cell in the fast network? They explore uh, eight configurations and we select one of them, that is this one, when we have an excitatory uh, relationship from the excitatory in the slow network to the excitatory in the fast network, which vary his uh, conductance factor in. Uh, there in 11 different values from 0 to 20 in irregular steps. And we, we made the same from the excitatory cells from the slow network to inhibitory cells to the fast network. And in this case, we select one when we get a constant relationship from uh, excitatory cells and inhibitory cells to excitatory cells in the fast network. And we vary the factor conductance from the excitatory cells of the slow network to inhibitory cells of the fast network. For the third experiment, we made a variation from the inhibitory cells of the slow network to the excitatory cells of the fast network, and we select one configuration, that is this one of here, when we get constant the the factor between excitatory to excitatory and just vary the values from the inhibitory to excitatory in this, from the slow to the uh, fast networks. And the last one is the inhibitory that inhibits the inhibitory cells from the slow network to the fast network. And we select this configuration when we get constant values for the excitatory to excitatory and inhibitory to excitatory cells from the fast from the slow to the fast network, and we get a, a variation a, of the conductance factor of the inhibitory to inhibitory cells. Here is the analysis of the results and what they do. First, they use a um, great histogram for counting the spikes over the time, and they use a beam of 6 milliseconds. Second, they perform an air Fourier analysis for the firing rate of the histograms to be able to measure the amplitude of the network. And finally, they perform an weight length analysis over the Fourier analysis using Torrens algorithm. Here is the first experiment. 
we vary the conductance factor through a series of 11 experiments. So we, we have here that this is the conductance factor of 0, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 3, 7, 10, 15, and 20. We are varying uh, the conductance factor from the slow network from the inhibitory cell to the fast network to an excitatory cell. So we can see here, this is the Fourier analysis and this is the wavelength and we can see that the slow network is remain the, the same. But because the target network is the fast network, uh, this is the network that is changing. So here we have the slow network and this is the fast network the inhibitory cells and the excitatory cells. And here we see the change of the second network, the first network, through time. And we are changing the uh, conductance factor. So we can say that uh, as long as the conductance factor is getting bigger, the first network is, getting, is being posed by the rhythm of the slow network. So at the end we can see that this fast network is behaving very much similar to the slow network. In this slide we have the result of the uh, the connection of the variable that the connection between between the uh, excitation the cells in the lock lock network and the the cells in the fast ne network uh, the the conductance factor vary va variate in, from zero uh, to twenty like in the past uh, experiment. Uh, we can see the the way that in, in that this network influences the, the the second network. First, when the excitatory cells in the lock uh, lock network um, activate the, the excitatory cells in the second, uh, first appear in this zone. Uh, behavior to to a slow frequency, and uh, when when the time goes, uh, the 
the occur occur as uh, sobre overposition of the behavior that this uh, network with the behavior of the fats network. So at the final uh, of the simulation, we can see the the, the uh, 20 hertz frequency that correspond to to this network and a frequency approximately of 20 or 5 or 50 hertz that correspond to the overposition of the comp of the behavior of the fast network with the behavior of the slot network for for the third experiment and the last for this presentation uh, we are varying the put the conductance factor from the excitatory cells in the slow network to the inhibitory cells in the fast network. What it means when, when, that when we get activated cells, uh, excitatory cells in the slow network, we get more inhibition in the uh, fast network. And as the previous uh, experiments, we vary this conductance factor from 0 to 20 in not regular steps. Here, as the previous one, we get uh, the Fourier uh, analysis and the wavelength analysis from the conductance factor of 0 to uh, 20, and we get uh, very easily that the variations of uh, the excitation of this uh, network uh, produce some inhibitions in the target network, that is, in this case, the fast network. And as in the previous uh, example, uh, experiments we get uh, the inhibitory cells in this uh, left column and the excitatory cells in the right column and those are in this first uh, row are for the slow network and these are for the fast network. What we get here is uh, how this uh, conductance factor uh, imposes the behavior of the slow network in the behavior of the fast network. So what we get here is that when we get ex excited cells here, we get more inhibition here. So we now we can see how uh, this uh, network affects the behavior of the uh, fast network, and we get just the activation and the uh, behavior of the slow network here. And that's what we get uh, when this uh, excitation makes the inhibition of the uh, fast network. And okay, that's all of our presentation for today and I hope that you enjoy with that. Thank you.